What up with you folks? Today we are drawing a concept race car. Let's get into it. So we start this sketch off on an eight and a half by 11. Uh, in hindsight, you know, hindsight's 2020, I probably should have drawn this on a little bit larger piece of paper uh, because as you can see, or as you will see, I run out of space towards the front end, the far side of the front of the sketch. And it's probably somewhere about here where I realize, oof, uh, I'm gonna run this sketch off the page, but sometimes it happens. I do take this into Photoshop afterwards and just tighten up the front end, make a couple adjustments, make some sketch changes, so it's no big deal. But uh, you could restart, I chose not to. And so here I'm thinking, and I'm just starting off by placing certain elements. I've got a, a sense for what a Le Mans car generally, or a Le Mans car looks like generally, right? Proportion is gonna be this a kind of cab forward, rear engined, rear to mid engined kind of vehicle. So I just start laying in little details, laying in the fenders, and then I start, I lay in a center line or at least it close to a center line to start to place that uh, fuselage, if you will, or, or the cockpit, and, and just to get a sense for what that shape might be, get a sense for the placement. And then I lay out uh, the front end of that windscreen and start to create the glass shape. Uh, and here what I'm doing is laying a cross section through there. So I'm, I'm drawing that from one side of the car to the far side, just to start building the volume around that cabin section. And then once I have that cross section, uh, I can start, begin to build around that, like you see here. So I have an idea of where the glass is, uh, where the corner of, of that glass is. That's an important transition period it is, you know, where's the A pillar? Uh, that, that generally represents the corner or a corner, depending on how round the front end is on your Le Mans car. Maybe it's just a little singular monocoque type of thing. That's not what I have here. Uh, personal choice, you can do whatever you want. Uh, I had a scoop to the front, scoop to the top rather, because you want to be able to pull in cool air coming over, that's coming out in quickly over the, uh, over the glass and, and pull that right into the motor. And then we've also got some additional cooling behind that uh, side view glass or behind the uh, yeah side view glass that's what we're gonna call it side windows more technical I got a little added a little bit of a Lexan sliding window makes it look a little racy uh, and then I start to figure out or right, how does this front end look uh, you'll see that I do change it later in Photoshop I simplify it a bit so it, it turned out okay. Running off the page was kind of a blessing in disguise, if you will. It, it allowed me to, or really forced me to make some changes later on in the sketch. I started to create a little bit of a mouth. Right? You wanna get some intake if you need it, which most Le Mans cars do have a, a, a smaller intake in the front. Uh, you don't need a whole lot of intake in the front because the motor's in the back or the engine's in the back, generally speaking and also depending on the class that you're racing in. So defining that mouth shape, starting to, so I'm using a Prismacolor, uh, not a very thin, but just a regular Prismacolor, so it's got a little bit thicker lead. It's actually not lead, it's more of a wax base so that it doesn't smear as much. And the benefit to a Prismacolor is that you can get some nice darks with that. So starting off this sketch, as I do any sketch, I try to press very lightly, right? So that I have some opportunity to make adjustments later on in the sketch. Uh, and at this point, I'm starting to press a little bit harder on that Prismacolor, starting to commit to the lines a little bit more uh, because the shape is taking form, if you will. Uh, or the shape is be beginning to become more apparent. So I can say, oh, I like the way this looks or I don't like the way this looks. And, for the lines that I do, uh, I block in a little bit darker. And the, the more that you can pre-visualize or see an element before you sketch it, usually the more accurate that element will be. 
Uh, however, it's very difficult right, to, to see an entire vehicle or even a full detail and before you start to put it on paper, uh, which is why I like to draw lightly in the beginnings. I have an idea of what this thing can be, but I'm not exactly sure how all the surfing is going to work or how all the details are going to come together, uh, which is the case for this rear vent. I wasn't exactly sure if, how it was going to attach or how that might look. Uh, was it going to be like a flying buttress like you see on the Ford GT or was it going to be something like I end up with here that is more of this connected element or, or holistic element. If you're finding value here, leave a like, subscribe, drop a comment if you have any questions. The more you engage with this content, the more people it finds. And that's what I'm trying to do. Reach out, find as many aspiring artists as possible and serve them in the best way or in the most useful way. Or maybe I'll say monolithic element. It's not quite a flying buttress. But I had to sketch it out to see. I had to, to try that out. And really, what's a good exhaust if you don't have a little smoke coming out, right? The smoke lets, lets viewers know that the driver's really getting after it, okay? Uh, adds a little bit of realism, a little bit of character to the sketch. Now obviously, we've got the wing in the back there, so starting to block that out. And I wanna show a little bit of the far side of the wing. You'd probably be able to see that in this particular perspective. And, and now I start to lay in a little bit darker values. I start to cut out some of those uh, vent areas or create a, another little vent here around the front so this, maybe this goes into the brakes or something or who knows exactly how the airflow works. Uh, that's something that I have to figure out in another sketch. But for this particular sketch, it's just starting to lay out where some of these interesting details might go. And obviously this is uh, sped up to about two times normal speed. So if you don't want to hear me speak and you want to just see the sketch at closer to normal speed, so it's easier to follow if you're trying to replicate the sketch, uh, go into the little settings tab on your, on your view if you're on a desktop and you can play this at half speed, which might make it a little easier to, to keep up with. But once I have the general shape blocked in, I then begin to add some value by right, trying to be not too dark at this point, just keep it light, ghosting in some these darker values to start to get the form to read. If you're early on in your artistic journey and this the idea of, well, how do you get the forms to read? I will have some videos coming out later, uh, just starting to build up the fundamental know-how of rendering spheres, cubes, the, the general, the basics of light, that type of thing. So stay tuned for those if you are early in your, in your, on your journey. Uh, if you already know most of that, that, that you know, identifying where the light is should kind of make sense to you. But if not, definitely leave a comment. I'd love to hear what you do or don't know and, and how I can best serve you in that way. And then just laying out wheels. Wheels are a super important part of any vehicle, concept vehicle or not, uh, they can really make or break a vehicle. Uh, here I've got a, I think it's an eight spoke is what I end up with. Not the most convincing wheel if I'm being honest, but it's pretty racy. It's got the single lug in the center, which is a pretty common. You see it in F1, it makes it feel racy if you will. Or maybe you won't, uh, who knows? You make whatever choice you want. It's your sketch, I'm just showing you how I'm creating mine. And then I start to add in some of those darker values to, to really set the rim into space, to start showing some depth in the, in the wheel. Especially in a race car, where there's a lot, there are generally wider wheels, so that depth starts to make it look more aggressive, like makes it look more performance oriented for sure. Right, and then as I'm adding some shadow, adding some value, just tightening up some of the details, some of the line work here, really creating some type of valence or some cladding around that exhaust, right? It'd probably get really hot, so you'd want some kind of a shield there of some sort. And then really along this whole body side that's kind of planar, where it's pretty fairly flat, there's not a ton of oscillating surfacing happening there. It's starting to block in 
some value to show that it's it's turned away from the light a little bit there assuming that the light's kind of coming from above uh, above and from the front so that side would be a little bit darker so putting some value there obviously knocking in the vents getting some shadow there and it's always nice to add a little bit of a shadow uh, below the below the mirrors or right? give starts to get the mirrors to feel like they're set off the, the body a little bit and then I come back in here at the rear and, and add some extra depth I don't press quite as hard in on the pencil towards the rear wheel I don't want it to necessarily be as highly contrasted as the the front wheel or the front section of the sketch I'd like to have more of the the dark values towards the front because it's a little bit closer to the eye if we were actually looking at this car right so it creates a little bit more drama as it starts to fade off uh, the paper and really carving out that that front vent getting some nice really pressing on that pencil to get a nice dark value adding some details in the headlights and uh, really as you've noticed throughout the sketch I just kind of work you know from side to side yeah, there's not it's not super formulaic in the process that I use for you know what detail do I add next? I just look at the sketch and as I see something in, in my mind's eye, uh, I start to put that on paper and that could be at the front of the sketch, that could be at the back of the sketch. Uh, so I just bounce around and, and just build out the volume or volumes. Uh, obviously you wanna add a little bit of a drop shadow, right? Make, make the car feel like it's sitting on something. Right? It feels like it's on the ground and planted. It's an important thing. And then I start to block in a little bit of an interior, just ghosting in, hinting at a, at a front seat. And then, uh, you know, you always got to add your little rectangle to, to frame the car and, and sign your work. Uh, at this point, I bring it into Photoshop and uh, obviously I just address this corner here, kind of tightened up the perspective, adjusted the rear wheel a little bit. Uh, the front wheel is still a little bit out of perspective but you know I can adjust that later if I'd like uh, and what I did choose to do uh, was actually change the front end a little bit as well to kind of minimize some of the openings there make it feel a bit more authentic and then just added two layers of a pretty quick value one for the body and one for the shadow to get this car to really read in a bit more dramatic fashion and that's it folks if you found any value like and subscribe leave a comment if you have any questions and we'll see you next time